Today we're going to be learning about Alexander Hamilton, and more specifically, how he got his face on money. People back in Alexander Hamilton's time, they were pretty angry. You might ask them why. Well, first of all, the economy wasn't very good. There was a huge debt from the Revolutionary War. No one knew how to fix it. People were obviously very worried about their future, so they changed the government from the Articles of Confederation to the Constitution. Washington, as president, was really well liked. He was actually unanimously elected. However, even Washington knew that patience among the people would only last so long. Would this constitution fix the problems, or would it be the same old thing and maybe another rebellion, or possibly even another revolution? Washington was a great leader, and he knew when to ask his friends for help. One of his friends was named Alexander Hamilton, so Washington created a job for Hamilton called the Secretary of the Treasury. And Washington gave Hamilton, who was really smart with money, the job of how it, figuring out how to save the economy. Hamilton's first idea was to fix the national debt. He would fix that by adding more debt. What? That doesn't make any sense. You might be looking like this right now. Well, Hamilton's plan was actually really smart. He was going to take the debt owed by each state and kind of put it all together with a national debt. Each state would be debt free. So their governments would be free to have more money to float around. And if all the debt was together, it could be paid back faster at a cheaper interest rate, which would save the country money. The only problem was that some states had already paid off all their debt. Most of these states were in the South, like North Carolina and Virginia. They did not think Hamilton's debt idea was a very good idea because they would have to pay more debt back and when they already had to pay their own debt back. They didn't think it was very fair for them. Of course, the two sides would eventually reach a compromise. Um, Hamilton's plan caused a lot of arguing between the North and the South for actually about six months, but eventually the two sides made a deal. The South decided to vote for the debt plan. In exchange, the North would agree to move the national capital from the North. It was originally in New York, uh, moved down to Philadelphia, and the North gave the capital to the South. They agreed to move it to a place called Washington, D.C., which wasn't even built yet. So the construction of Washington, D.C. would happen, and then the capital would move into the south. And now you know why the capital is in Washington, D.C., so when we go there later this year, you can remember that I taught you that. The plan that Hamilton proposed with the debt worked out great. Now that America had decided to pay the debt back and they had a clear plan, other countries now had faith in America, and they invested in American businesses because they knew that they would be getting their money back. There were still more problems, though. Hamilton thought the country needed a national bank. This bank would be a place that would be a bank just for the government, and it would be a place where they could lend and borrow money and keep their money safe. The only problem was the Constitution. It didn't say anywhere in the Constitution that the government could make its own bank. However, um, there was a part of the Constitution that said that Congress could pass any laws that were necessary and proper, and Hamilton urged Congress to use that part of the Constitution to create the bank. Again, it caused a big debate, but in the end, the Congress decided that it was necessary and proper, and the bank was established for 20 years. There was one last part of the plan. Hamilton was a visionary. He really thought that America's future needed to change, and he looked at the way England ran its country, and he saw that in England they had a lot of manufacturing, lots of big factories, and that's how the economy ran. In America, well, the factories here they weren't so great. It looked more like a sheep in front of a water mill. So Hamilton wanted to improve American factories, and he proposed that in order to do this, the factories that did exist in America needed protection. So he wanted to put a tariff on all products that, the, that were coming into America, specifically the British products. He wanted to raise taxes on these products because it would cause American products to sell better, because they wouldn't have any competition from the imports anymore. It would help factories and let them grow, and America be could become a more wealthy and powerful nation. And who wouldn't want that? Well, you might have guessed it. Again, the South. They didn't like any of Hamilton's plan. Um, led by Thomas Jefferson, the South opposed the tax on British goods. Factory life was different, and they didn't really understand it. It went against their values of farming the land and working the land as part of your job. There's a picture of Jefferson. He was the one that led the Southern attack against Hamilton's plan. And the South also liked to buy fancy British products, so they didn't want to have to pay more for them when they were imported. 
The tax that Hamilton proposed never went through. It was the only part of his plan that didn't actually happen. And it started a, a real feud between the South, led by Jefferson, they would eventually call themselves the Democratic Republicans, versus the North, led by John Adams, who was a Federalist. These would be the first two political parties in America, and Hamilton's plan was one of the first things that divided the two groups. Hamilton wasn't around to see it because he died in a gun duel. Yes, back then, politicians really actually fired guns at each other. So to recap, Hamilton proposed fixing the debt problem by adding state debt to the national debt, and the South, in exchange, got the capital. That consolidated the debt and got it paid back quicker at a lower interest rate. Hamilton also proposed creating a national bank to lend, borrow, and store money. Was it legal? Well, maybe not, and that started a big debate between the two sides, but it did pass. And the last part of Hamilton's plan, which was the tariff, was blocked by the South, and the two opinions between the North and South really turned to those two political parties, the Federalists and Democratic Republicans, later on. We'll learn about that in a few weeks. In the end, Hamilton's plan was a huge success. It got America on the right track financially and caused a lot of dollars to come rolling on in, and that is why Hamilton's face is on the $10 bill.